Hi everyone, welcome to Curio Books, which is a new series we are starting right now. This, uh, this series, I, what I uh, plan is that we will pick up few books and I'm going to summarize these books in a very, very brief video that what all the take home messages is. What are the big ideas that is being covered in these books we are going to cover uh, thoroughly. You know, after, uh, of course, I read all these books and I make these summaries in very, very small uh, uh, you know, index card. Uh, I have covered several books, so I'm going to present you what I learned from these books. Uh, what are the big ideas of these books? Okay, so this is called Curio Books. In addition, I'm also going to present you the review, my own take on this book. Is it really worth reading? Uh, in any case, I already present. I'm going to present you the idea, the big ideas on it. And uh, yes, yeah, so expect the review of these books too. So my first pick of this curio books is uh, a, a very new book it's called rationality by one of my favorite uh, author steven pinker uh, i have read his book the enlightenment now uh, i've been really uh, carried away with this book you know it's a fantastic book if you haven't read please check it out i'm going to cover that as well the summary of the uh, the enlightenment now as well so that is why i picked up this book rationality because i expect a lot from steven pinker the giant like him by the way, for the uninformed, Steven Pinker is probably one of the uh, best known philosophers of today. He's an American philosopher. Uh, he's basically, uh, his main field, main thought is linguistics, in which his theory is quite similar to, uh, you know, the Noam Chomsky's universal grammar. He's also a psychologist, uh, rather uh, evolutionary psychologist and popular science writer. Okay. So with this brief introduction, so uh, let us come to the rationality. This is the book of him, the latest book. And uh, the rationality has around 3.86 stars in Goodreads. So I usually check the rating in the Goodreads and my cutoff is around 3.5. And post that, I, I see it. You know, 3.8586 is as on today. I'm recording this video on 12th of August, 2022. It may increase or decrease later. We have to wait and see right and it's a it's a good heuristics check out that uh, uh, you know that uh, good reads score before you choose to read the book because uh, millions of books in the world and uh, no one has got lifetime to read all these books right so you need to apply some heuristics for it so before talking about the book first is the, the cover of this book i have criticized this cover but unfortunately the, you know, the criticism didn't happen yet you know, so he chose to go with this cover itself. The, the cover, the problem is that rationality, well, the, by the way, the, the full title of this book is that rationality, what it is, why it seems scarce and why it matters. Okay. So the problem with this one is that you can see it here. Rationality leads to, there is an arrow leads to what it is. Then there is another arrow leads to why it seems scarce. That leads to why it matters. It leads to Stephen. That leads to Pinker. It's very, very bizarre, uh, you know, because this, he is basically, uh, uh, he, the, the, the book is all about reason, about logic, and the cover itself doesn't make any sense to me. It's not logical. It's, it's a flow chart. Uh, maybe it might have uh, made it in, uh, you know, the built-in flow chart options of the Microsoft Word, but it's a very, very poor presentation of the book. It's, it, the, the title itself is not logical, okay? So now coming to the book, what the, the book says, right? So uh, he spent initial few chapters on uh, explaining what reason is, you know? So uh, as you know, the reason, the, the dictionary definition of the reason might be very different from uh, what the reason is all about, right? So in dictionary, if you search for the reason, uh, the reason why she came late today. So the explanation, right? That That is, uh, you know, that is like our uh, uh, everyday life explanation of the reason but actual reason what uh, the book is all about is about logic and rationality means it's a it's you know it's it's a tool to approach the the life through logic and reason you know and he spent a lot of time explaining what the reason is but uh, i think the best way to define the reason is a quest for absolute truth or the objective reality it's a quest he missed out that definition you know and then he says all about uh, uh, why all these things in our world that we take it for granted is a reason of, uh, you know, it, it is a product of reason, the rational thinking. Indeed, correct. 
But of course, I would like to add, it is materialistic things, right? So whatever the things be, for example, uh, for example, antibiotics, even COVID-19 vaccine, and you are watching this through mobile phone, most likely, or through a laptop, the internet, everything is through the ration, rational uh, thought process, you know? And uh, he defines the reason as it's a means to the end. The end is basically a goal. Uh, you know, the, of course, the goal is not the reason, right? The reason is a way to reach that goal. For example, COVID-19 vaccine, to develop that vaccine is the goal. Everybody had that goal during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? And to approach that goal, scientists work tirelessly day in and day out. So that path toward that goal is called the reason. I think it's a very nice way to, uh, you know, to uh, bring out a facet of what the reason is all about. You know, it's a tool that allows us to pursue our goal. But goals come from passion. That is a very famous quote of the David Hume, the British philosopher. Goals come from passion. That means that uh, what will be your goal in your life? It is intricately connected to your value system, your virtues, your good and bad, your morality, your ethics. For example, uh, for example, what? To develop atom bomb or to use nuclear power for a peaceful, uh, you know, uses like, uh, the, you know, for to generate the electricity, the nuclear power plant. So it's all up to you to decide which goal to, to choose. So of course, the reason has no saying about that reason, uh, the goal, you know. So ultimate goal could be anything, but you can use the power of reason to achieve that goal. That is what the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the concept is all about, right? And because reason uh, is from the goal, you know, of course, the reason is what we adopt. It's a tool to, to reach the goal. And the goal is intricately linked with the passion. So reason is slave of the passion. That is another very interesting statement in this book. While goals are neither rational or irrational, goals are irrational. It's, you cannot call it as irrational or rational. It's irrational. Irrational means there is no re reason in the goal. It's up to you to choose which goal you want to pursue. To steal or to contribute in. To do good or to do bad. You know, reason has no saying on it. You know, uh, and the reason helps us to prioritize our goal. That is another very interesting statement that we can prioritize. We, if we have multiple goals, so some goals are obviously not logical, like, you know, circular logic. If you have that kind of goal in your life, you can remove it. There is no point in pursuing that kind of circular logical, uh, you know, the, the goal, right? So it enables us to prioritize a goal. I disagree. Uh, to certain aspect because not all goals can be prioritized based on the reason alone. You know, of course, uh, the goal prioritization mostly it is your own value system, right? So that is intricately linked to your uh, belief system and your religion if you believe in uh, God and if you follow a, a religion, right? So reason has not much of seeing on prioritization of the goals, right? And you need to stop to think about goals. Yes, of course, everybody has to think about goals, right? Goals is something like a compass in our life, you know? So unless you are uh, you are actually working on right direction, then whatever be your input, whatever be the productive time you think you're doing will not lead to that goal, isn't it? So, you know, if you haven't thought about your goals, it's right time to think about the goals, you know? And another very interesting idea in this book is that ignorance and also the self-constraint can be rational choices. Self-constraint means, uh, you know, uh, practicing self-discipline, temperance, you know. And uh, yeah, so leading a disciplined lifestyle, uh, restrained, you know, self-restraint. All these are meaning the same thing. So how the ignorance can be rational choice? Because we are living in a deluge of information, right? So information overlord. So if you are actually paying attention to all information, then definitely that is not an optimal way of life. One good example, of course, the book didn't say, is the you know endless scroll in the social media. And mostly this media is all about uh, propaganda and uh, fake news, misinformation, disinformation, isn't it? And yes, yeah, so in that clutter of this information, how do you prioritize it? So only option is to... Uh, you know, to uh, select which news you want to follow, for example, in Twitter, whom you want to follow, right? And um, uh, for me, I, I personally find 
uh, Reddit, especially some of the very good uh, subreddits, much more useful than looking at the Facebook. You know, so ignorance can be a rational choice. So as a self restraint, you know, so resisting the temptations, you know, whatever be the temptation. So he put a very interesting example from uh, the famous Greek epic poem Odyssey by Homer, right? So Odysseus is the, the hero of this story and Odysseus want to cross an island inhabited by sirens. So sirens are mythical creatures. They uh, do a lot of, uh, you know, the tempting, uh, you know, the tempting mantras they, they do, the chant and they, they try to appeal, they try to distract the focus of the sailors, right? So the lust, for example, they do a lot of lust, the, the, this one, this uh, sirens. So he want to cross that island in his ship. So how he can do it? So he consulted a, uh, an astrologer, one lady, and she advised him that the only way to cross that island is put plug on the ears of all sailors and, you know, tie yourself, that is Odysseus, tie yourself onto the mast of the ship. Very interesting, right? So that is all about uh, self-discipline and temperance, right? And also uh, uh, not being a victim to the uh, various, you know, temptations in our life. I was just thinking about a Chinese, uh, you know, uh, Chinese uh, uh, aphorism of uh, three uh, monkey. You might have seen that in various incarnations of it, right? Never see the unwanted things, don't speak unwanted words and never hear uh, the distractions. That's the same as this. So I think the monkey is much better. Of course, this is also a very good example that he put in his book. You know, the Pinker's, uh, the new book of rationality, isn't it? So, uh, and of course, he did say another example, which I really didn't like it. The example which he said is about the dominant gene for an incurable disease. Uh, for example, breast cancer, the dominant gene. Uh, of course, it is not really a dominant, but still it's a BRCA1 and BRCA2 is linked with uh, breast cancer. So, if you're detected of this kind of BRCA1, for example, you, are, you already have this gene, BRCA1. And there is nothing much you can do. So that is kind of an ignorance, uh, you know, uh, not, I mean, that is kind of an information in which ignorance can be a bliss, according to Stephen Pinker. You know, if you haven't knew that you, you have a BRCA1, for example, then your life would be much better, you know. I disagree to that point. The reason is that, for example, this, even if it's a dominant allele of a disease, still information is powerful, you know. So if you detected at the young age that you have BRCA1, you can consider various options. For example, mastectomy, right? Uh, uh, the removal of the breast. Many people have done it, even uh, some of the famous Hollywood actress, right? And uh, you can also take uh, precautions on why, how to uh, prolong the development of that uh, lethal disease, you know? Or, uh, you know, for example, uh, yearly mammogram screening. You know, breast screening you can go for or even monthly or even six monthly screening you can do. So I don't think, I think that this is really a, a good example. I disagree with the Pinker. Sorry for that. It's not a good example why, uh, you know, example why ignorance can be a bliss. Okay. And um, yes, yeah, so another uh, important fact here is that science applies rationality to the real life or real world. Of course, the science, rationality for me is all about science. Only exception would be some axiomatic expressions in mathematics, like A plus B is C, you know. So 1 plus 1 is 2. A plus B is not C, of course. Uh, whatever, that, that is the structure of the axiomatic expression. 1 plus 1 is 2 is, of course, is axiomatic, right? You cannot disprove it. And except that kind of logic, pure logic, most of the uh, reason and rationality is all about science, right? It's a pragmatic approach on it. So, of course, science can uh, uh, look only falsifiable claims. There are many claims which are unfalsifiable. One example is that if I have a, a medicine and uh, to prepare that medicine, I have to mix with some mystic essence. Well, he didn't say that in this book. I'm just giving you an example. So, you might wonder what is this mystic essence? How you define it? So this is unfalsifiable claim which I'm making. So of course that doesn't come in the realm of science. Faith healing, using prayer to, uh, you know, to get rid of, to cure the cancer. 
you know so those kind of things doesn't come in in, in science so uh, he did say about uh, you know unfalsifiable uh, uh, you know claims another good example would be russell steepot originally conceived it's a thought experiment by bertrand russell another british philosopher of science russell steepot is that imagine a teapot revolving around the sun between between mars and jupiter there is an asteroid belt and among this small small rocks of the asteroid belt is a teapot that is what a uh, preposterous uh, you know claim by russell how will you disprove it even with a super powerful a uh, telescope like uh, we have james webb space telescope that telescope is very very less powerful to detect a small object like a, uh, a teapot uh, in the vast expanses of space so that is an example of an unverifiable statement instead of those well known example i mean you can also you know ingenuously you can make very interesting example of your own instead pinker said a very interesting example which is not an example at all okay it's a nonsense example that he said a statement all bachelors are unmarried of course it's an illogical statement all bachelors by definition what a bachelor is is an unmarried right so that statement is a good example of tautology right so it is a tautology there or uh, you know tautology means redundant statement same thing you are repeating again and again right so by definition bachelors are unmarried so all bachelors are unmarried is a nonsense statement because it is tautological statement it's not unfalsifiable statement it's a tautology it's a logical problem it's not unfalsifiable i think uh, you know he got completely mistaken here and i'm really wondering how come such a major philosopher is uh you know he made this silly mistake in his latest book and also i wonder why the publisher didn't spot this as a mistake it's it's a big mistake even uh St the pinkers steven pinkers students who wouldn't have done this mistake in a book like uh, you know this is a big book right it's a rationality i am really surprised about this silly mistake in in the book you know it's it's not non falsifiable it's a simple example of tautology now he said about uh, the pragmatism why pragmatistic uh, approach of rationality is more important than that is a science science is all about pragmatism right rather than armchair philosophical re preaching by a very interesting example of uh, uh, the tooth counting by british monks you know so this example as originally quoted by francis bacon uh, you know uh, uh, francis bacon is that uh, the monks three monks are sitting in a monastery and one monk says that there are 35 uh, tooth in horse mouth you know the horse have 35 tooth the another monk said that no according to bible and according to ancient wisdom uh, it is basically 40 then another monk said no according to my analysis of uh, uh, ancient scriptures and uh, everything you know they both are sitting in a very nice chair leather chair and very comfortably inside the monastery the third one said no there is 50 and another guy who is basically his servant he stood up and said the gentleman said that while well masters why are you arguing let me go out to the stable and let me check out i will give you the right answer see that is the pragmatist approach that is the the, the scientific method so rationality in the real life is all about science nothing much about uh you know of uh, armchair philosophical preaching you know so pragmatism of course the steven pinker himself uh, is a pragmatist philosopher you know i like it this uh this metaphorical or uh, this thought experiment by the bacon of course it's not by pinker he quoted the francis bacon's experiment right and then he devoted the entire chapter on institutions and why institutions are really important for uh, guaranteeing the rationality you know for example the judiciary and uh, law enforcement and government makes sense uh, because individuals you know the the rationality is good for the individual but if everyone is rational it's not good we are going to have several problems one example is the you know the uh, uh, the tragedy of the commons you might know the tragedy of the commons means that uh, in britain uh, the commons were the grassland where anybody can graze their cattle and if the, the these commons are unrestrained there is no control then what is going to happen is a few uh, selfish farmers will completely grab the entire grass wealth 
right? So that is called the tragedy of the common. That is one good example of it. Another example is the arms race. You know, country as such, if uh, if two countries, two poor countries are neighbor and one country have a nuclear weapon, then the second country will definitely spend all its resources, all its GDP on developing nuclear weapons. And that other country, the, the uh, its neighbor want more and more. So both the countries will be in a fight to make, you know, they will make lots of harm at the expense of poverty. No, no money is there to, uh, you know, to curtail the poverty. So that kind of arms race is also uh, one a good example of these problems with extreme rationality. He uh, quoted a very interesting example here about a concert. So optimally, if you don't think about the rules of the concert and if you don't think about others, so if you stand up, if you are in the first row, if you stand up, then you can see much better, much clearer what is happening in the stage. So if you stand up, what is going to happen is that the rest of the people will also stand up. You know, whoever is a backside of you will stand up. So ultimately, everybody in the concert, entire audience is going to stand up. So is it going to be good? So the entire experience for everybody will be ruined. So it's the solution is suboptimal comparing with everybody sitting, right? So rationality is good at individual level but on a collective it's not good so you need restrictions you need you know law enforcement right so uh, there is a very interesting quote which i came across in this book is by james madison in uh, 1788 james madison, madison by the way was uh, one of the founding fathers of the united states of america and he was a fourth u.s president okay and he said that if humans were perfect government wouldn't be necessary you know, so if you are all rational and if you all have that empathy about others, then there is no point in having the government. The government is there because people are not, you know, not perfect. We all have imperfections, imperfections as in selfishness, right? So that is the reason why we have these institutions like judiciary and uh, institutions guarantee that our life is so much better. Our life is more rational, you know. And uh, he did say very interesting uh, analogy between adversarial system in judiciary in which uh, two lawyers uh, present and fight against each other and the judge takes the, the rule, right? So that it's all about criticism. Adversarial system in the judiciary is all about criticizing others' point of view, right? Uh, and peer review system, you know, in, in sciences, we have peer review. Once you submit an article to a journal, the editor, uh, you know, submit that uh, article to two different reviewers or three or four different, depends on the journal. And they start criticizing. And of course, you don't know who these reviewers are and reviewers don't know who the author is. All these are in place to safeguard various biases. You know, for example, uh, authors can bribe the reviewers to get their articles in it, right? So double blind peer review system is a fantastic way adopted in sciences that minimizes these prejudices, these biases. So in that sense, you know, this uh, governments make sense here, right? So yeah, that is a very interesting example that the Pinker used in his book. And uh, yes, yeah, so punishing bad behavior by law enforcement is also a good option. Uh, the reason is that, uh, you know, it's a rational, uh, you know, uh, the reason is that, you know, the rule breakers, if we know that rule breakers will be punished, we are much more likely to pay our taxes, which more, we'll be more happy rather, right? We'll be much more happier to pay our taxes if we know that the rule breakers, the people who are evading tax will be punished. And if we come to know that people are not being punished, then we will pay the tax, but we will have some, you know, problems. You know, we are not that happy, isn't it? I have seen that this uh, not so happy faces in many of my colleagues in Facebook. The profile have a badge that proud a uh, filer of income tax with the, you know, income tax the department's logo in it. That means that they knew that people are evading the income tax. They are not that happy, and they want to show it off that they are a proud filer. You know, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is that's important. The punishing the bad behavior and the criminals guarantees that we our uh, we are much more uh, living in a more rational 
you know uh, rational world right and freedom of speech then another uh, chapter is all about freedom of speech in this book uh, which ensures that both popular ideas which are often wrong while unpopular ones which are often right both gets a fair hearing so that freedom of speech i really like it you know and this is also very very important the popular ideas are often wrong popular ideas are usually myth and also propaganda and false news and fake news you know whatever you believe you think that these are right might not be true confirmation bias is very common so popular idea the idea just because it is popular doesn't mean that it's right or it's rational you know and popular ideas are usually wrong i agree with that point too it's a very very interesting point and unpopular ones are usually right yes unpopular ideas are usually right you know and it gets fair hearing because the state ensures the freedom of speech fantastic i really like that point and our most important moral idea is compelling because it is stood in re uh, reason you know that is his final chapter is all about that what is that golden rule of morality you know so what is that golden rule of morality most of the religions around the world if you look at their holy books for example here in india we have bhagavad gita and of course bible and quran right so if you see that the one central idea of all these books is that the golden rule of morality is is about equality but more specific treat others as you would wish to be treated treat your neighbor as you wish yourself to be treated by them you know so that idea so give and take idea right so that that idea is stood in reason is it really a reason is it really logical idea yeah it is logical right if you uh, want how your others are treating you treat them just like that is i think it's pre pre pretty logical it's pretty reasonable idea but of course it's not axiomatic but still yeah it is reasonable it's a rational idea i can say that you know and uh, but i don't want to generalize that all ethical ideas like this are rational it's not this could be a sole exception and uh, you know this sole exception itself is a central and uh, central to all almost all religions in the world that is very very interesting so he he caught it uh, at the right uh, direction so yeah uh, so morality can be grounded in the reason but it's a famous statement by plato you know uh, but can be grounded it doesn't mean that entire premises of the morality is ethical uh, is rational because ethics and morality is it, you know the reason has no saying on it but some ideas in morality can be rational this is uh, one one of the idea which is both ethical and rational so this is the uh, he devoted the final chapter on this particular idea you know about the golden rule of morality so overall how do i like this book it's kind of good there are some interesting ideas which i came across but comparing with uh, steven pinker's uh, last book which i read is the enlightenment now this book is not at all to the uh, to my expectations i expected so much better from pinker and also the kind of examples that he used for example that uh, uh, the bachelor's example right uh, you know uh, all bachelors are unmarried as an unfalsifiable this is completely a wrong statement i didn't expect from a top philosopher like steven pinker to to quote this bad example and more than that what is the editorial practices friends this is a edited book right this book is published by a famous publisher in the west and i i wonder why the the publisher left it and even the, the the cover of this book itself is not rational it's not logical that the flow diagram makes no sense so do i recommend this book for reading i don't think i will recommend to the the general public i don't think is is there any way but if you really want to read one book choose enlightenment now of the stephen pinker one book of the pinker you know stephen pinker otherwise it's a pass and yeah so that is my summary of this rationality i hope you like this summary i would like to know how you 
think about rationality if you have read this book and also general comment about my presentation and how do you like this series please drop a comment in the show notes be below in the in the comment section below have a nice day thank you for watching goodbye